Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 1978 Giallo film, The Pajama Girl Case, and it's shot in Australia, so that's why I didn't say Italian Giallo film, but many people who were Italian involved in the making of this film. Now, <laughs> right off the bat, I'm going to say, I have said in my reviews for Giallo films I didn't like all that much, or I thought were eh, uh, that every Giallo film is worth watching at least once, that they're all fun. Well, I think I found my ex exception to the rule at this point. This is the 38th Giallo film I've seen, and I finally hit the wall where this is one I just would not recommend, really. Like, this is not a good film, and it's not even a good Giallo film. Like, there's not enough Giallo fun to it in a bad way to even make it worth anyone's time, in my opinion, especially because the runtime's like... I don't know, like an hour and 42 minutes or something like that. The story's not there for it. <laughs> Definitely not there for it. And that's the biggest problem with this film in general is the story is bad. The story is stupid. It's poorly constructed. It's very slow. I mean, a lot of Giallo is slow, but there's a lot of interesting stuff going on and they're getting there. So like you have a lot of fun to keep you entertained. This one, not so much. In the beginning, a little bit more, yes. Uh, but as it goes on, oh. It really drags horribly. So this one's written and directed by Flavio Mugherini, who also did the film Lunatics and Lovers. Okay, whatever. Uh, this was actually inspired by a real murder from 1934 in Australia, which, as I said, this is where they shoot the film. They actually uh, show Australia quite a bit. You know, they make a very big point of showing a lot of uh, particularly Australian structures in the film. The one main one, I forget what it's called, the one in Sydney, I don't remember what that's called, it's very recognizable when you see it, but yeah, so it's, you know. Uh, one of the very interesting things about the music in this film, which by the way, whenever there's lyrics in music in this film, oh my god, that's like the worst music ever, but then after I started hearing it enough, I was just like, I'm kind of looking forward to that because it's like a so bad it's good type music, and at least there's a so bad it's good something in this film. But anyway, the score is actually done by Riz Ortolani. Now, some people may be thinking, oh, Riz Ortolani, that sounds familiar. Well, I'll tell you why it sounds familiar. Because he's done, first of all, he's done tons and tons and tons of scores. Like, I think he has like 200 and some IMDb credits for just for doing music for films. But here are some other films he did scores for. So Sweet, So Perverse, Seven Bloodstained Orchids, Don't Torture a Duckling, Seven Dead in the Cat's Eye, Killer Crocodile, Killer Crocodile 2, and probably what he's most well known for, Cannibal Holocaust. A lot of people know the Cannibal Holocaust soundtrack. A lot of people comment on how great it is. That's Riz Ortolani. And Riz Ortolani unfortunately worked on the Pajama Girl case. Ugh. This one's a bad one. So the opening song is very weird. Anytime there are lyrics, it's weird. And the singing, the other thing is the actual singing with these songs is unbelievably flat, and I mean from a tone level. It's just very flat, and there's not a whole lot of range, to be honest. I don't know. I'd be interested to hear from someone who, like, legitimately likes the music in this film. Not just, I, I mean the, the, the songs with lyrics. That's what I'm referring to. Because other than that, fine. Like, the, the music's fine. So Thompson, who's kind of, you know, he's the old detective who's been retired, obviously, who's honestly the best character in the film, the only character that I really cared about at all, because all the other characters are very flat, um, don't have good backstories, and just aren't good people, aren't anyone you would actually root for. So, like, either they're just very disinteresting or they're terrible. Yeah, so they really kind of failed on the front of creating good characters, except for Thompson, who doesn't stick around for the whole film, who should have... I mean, even if he wasn't going to be f around for the whole film, at least keep him for the overwhelming majority of it. I think they made him exit like halfway through the film or a little bit after halfway. There was way too much of this film without Thompson because he is actually an enjoyable character and all the scenes with him were probably the best scenes in my opinion. So Thompson actually really advocates hard for taking the case in the very beginning when they first find the dead body of who you end up finding out is... Now, here's the thing. IMDb says her name's Glenda, but they call her Linda in the film because I was watching it with dubs, so I'm just going to call her Linda for the purpose of this. But know that IMDb says Glenda, so I don't know if it's Glenda in the Italian version and um, Linda in the American version. I, 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 
just don't know. So I'm referred to her as Linda. So Thompson, um, yeah, so you get the idea that he's very bored in life. You know, he makes comment about being retired and he advocates so hard for like, I want this case. I want this case. It's obviously, it's, he has nothing else to do with his life. Like he needs some sort of feeling of purpose. Uh, but unfortunately, that's kind of what ends up leading to his demise in the end. Very unfortunately for the viewer, especially because that's the only interest. Um, so initially there was a gun that was shown in the glove box of, I guess he was like the sugar daddy of Linda. Uh, so there was a gun shown when she opened that glove box. So I thought that it was going to end up leading to like, oh, something's going to happen with this gun. And maybe this sugar daddy guy is going to end up being the killer. But it was like a total, like it didn't mean anything. I guess maybe it was there for a red herring, maybe. But I'm not willing to give this film that much credit. <laughs> to be honest. So note that pajamas on the dead woman were yellow. There's actually a lot of occurrences of yellow in this, which I believe are just supposed to be references to Giallo. Uh, this happens in other films. It happens a lot in the case of the Bloody Iris. They put yellow like everywhere, and they actually even use yellow to kind of give you hints as to what's actually going on and who the killer is. But um, with this film, they have yellow in a few places. The main places they have it like I said, the pajamas are yellow that she's found dead in, uh, Linda that is, and then the scene where Linda um, has sex with the three guys, which is on many, many levels, I'll talk about it later, but in, on many levels, a horrible scene. Um, anyway, she, going up the stairs to the, I guess it was a hotel room at that point, uh, it's it has like yellow glass with yellow light coming through. One of the guys is wearing a yellow shirt. She's got the yellow pajamas that she was found dead in. And then there's a yellow sheet on the top or a yellow comforter on top of the bed that she goes up to. So very clear references to giallo because giallo means yellow in Italy. So yeah. Anyway, or in Italian, I should say. According to Linda, Evelyn tried to tried to not go home, so much so that she potentially feigned sexual interest in Linda. I thought that whole storyline was going to end up going somewhere. The only thing you actually get out of the the situation with Evelyn and Linda, because she was the one that she was telling her sugar daddy really didn't want to go back to her house is what it seemed like, which made me kind of think initially that the dead body found was Evelyn. But then you find out that like what's really going on is they're showing two stories at once, which are the investigation story and then all the events leading up to Linda actually being killed and then revealing, oh, she was a dead body, basically, which is a great idea. I'm fine with that idea. I think it's a really cool idea, and I like that they did that, but it was just executed very poorly, in my opinion. So, And, and I thought that the Evelyn story would have a lot more to do with something. I mean, the only thing is, after she tells her initial story about how she didn't want to go home and she kind of like slept with her a little bit, the only other time she pops up is when she sends her the pajamas. Like, that's it. So I was like, it's just... And there's a bunch of that type of stuff in the film. It's just like, huh? I like how the police walk in on Quint just beating his dick. Like, just the guy who, would, who apparently people were saying put those dilapidated cars on the beach, which, how did he do that? Like, that's another thing. Like, they're like, oh, who put those cars there? It's like, this is this beach bum, T Quinn. He beats his dick every day. I, it's just like, I don't, how did, how did he get them there? Like, there's so many, like, left field, like, out of nowhere type things. I did think it was funny, though, that he was beaten off when they found him. And then the fact that Thompson, when they're about to leave, after, you know, questioning, questioning him a little bit, like, he's like, have fun. <laughs> I thought that was pretty fun. Um, like it goes back to Thompson is the best character, man. He is the best character in this. And had he been in it more, like a lot more, and they didn't need to have the whole flashback portion of like showing all the events leading up to her dying. They could have just explained it because it's not even interesting. Like it's literally not interesting. None of those characters are interesting. The events aren't even interesting. They're actually a big letdown for the whole mystery of the thing. Ugh, hate it. But anyway, uh, so it was an attempt, the, the whole thing with Quint, you know, beating off, it was an attempt to connect him as a murderer since the coroner had already said, oh, it's some sort of sex maniac. Because in these Giallo films, it is always a sex maniac. Um, oh, which, by the way, something else I meant to say by now, so I'll just throw it in here, is that this film's from 1978, which is like well after the big 
period for giallo films like giallo films were only popular through like 1974 so like four years later this shows up so um i don't know if they're trying to restart something obviously this is not a good way to do it with such a bad film but yeah uh the real sex maniac appears to be roy uh and he watches the muppets after sex too so uh roy is the third lover of linda's because she's got her sugar daddy She's got Antonio, who she ends up um, marrying. I guess she does end up marrying him? I'm unclear on that. And then she has Roy. Now, I just thought it was funny. Like, Roy was very sexual with her. So I thought, oh, maybe Roy's the killer because he's extremely sexual. But once again, a red herring. But he was watching the Muppets, I think was really funny, after they had sex at his place. Very funny. Uh, I like that Thompson ends up playing dumb with Morris so he can continue his investigation without his interference. He was actually acting at that point like he was, like, real put off by the investigation and, like, it was just, like, a pain in his ass. And I was just like, wait, why is he acting like that? Because he was very animate that he wanted to do this because he has nothing else to do in life. But then I found out, oh, he's just kind of not giving information and feigning disinterest so that Morris would kind of leave him alone so he could just carry out his investigation. And Morris is a dumb character. He's terrible. You can see how jealous Antonio gets when guys are checking her out when she's working. That's when Antonio was hanging out on that boat like I, where people were having dinner and she was waitressing. And he kept seeing all these guys checking her out and he was just like getting visibly pissed off. So you could kind of see like his anger issues and things building so it, it does make sense for his character when he you know goes too far and he ends up actually accidentally killing linda so it's insane that the police put her body on display yeah i didn't understand that i mean it's something that if it was in a better film i would be like okay i mean it's kind of an interesting idea but very unrealistic, obviously, of these police officers being like, let's put her dead body on display and then maybe someone will, you know, identify her. And all they got out of it was a bunch of false leads anyway. Like, it was a t horrible idea. And the other crazy thing is all the people who were around looking, almost everyone was just acting like it was no big deal whatsoever. So, like, the acting wasn't very good. Uh, the idea of it wasn't very good. It didn't really fit. Didn't fit anything. Nothing fits with this. Um, it was kind of unclear on who Linda's sugar daddy was, by the way, because a large portion through the film, I was like, who is this guy? Is this her father? Like age wise, obviously it could be her father, but they're not acting like father and daughter. And then eventually they were talking about, I think it's when Antonio and Roy were fighting in the car. And I think Aunt, uh, Roy had said something about going, her going back to her sugar daddy. And I was like, oh, that's gotta be who that is. And then that's kind of f further bolstered when she goes to him and she's having dinner with him at, a, like, the clubhouse. It's like a golf club or something. Notice how lavish and comfy Glenda's time with Roy is versus the dichotomy of her life with Antonio that looks like kind of a beaten up, dingy apartment with, you know, lights coming through. It was like green and red lights strobing in the bedroom because of where they're located uh, yeah, and then also just, like, personality-wise, like, Antonio, not a good personality. Like, obviously, I was saying he, he gets very angry very quick. He's got a bad temper. Uh, I, in particular, like the, the part where they're sitting for dinner and he's like, pours himself the beer. And he's, like, talking to her and he's just got, like, spaghetti, like, falling out of his mouth. He's, like, eating like a slob. He's just got, you know, a, like, a white shirt on and he's just, like, yeah. It's a good dichotomy between, like, it, it shows why she really wanted to be with someone like Roy or her sugar sugar daddy versus Antonio. But it also makes you wonder, like, why did was she even with, um, or with someone like Roy? Makes you wonder, why was she even with Antonio, and then why does she go along with it to, like, marry him? Like, it makes no sense. She has these other options. A lot of the stuff with the script makes absolutely no sense. And it makes her a very unsympathetic character, too. It makes her overly stupid. It makes her overly sexual, too. Even when she doesn't want to do anything. Like, I'm getting to that, but yeah. I like the guy with all the birds. He was actually a fun character, but obviously he's barely in it. Uh, he was such a free-spirited individual, and he was so open about uh, the issues with his wife. Uh, the one he married just for citizenship. I thought that was funny. Um, 
his interaction with Thompson was good. Like, those were the two best characters right there. If he would have start then teamed up with Thompson and they would have gone and solved the investigation together, that would have been cool. But, alas, what could have been? All the stuff, stuff with Linda's two relationships is very slow. It really, really, really slows this film down, and that is the biggest problem. That's why I was saying, like, they could have just gotten rid of that because it's not that interesting. It takes forever. It's more of a disappointment than anything in the end when you find out how things actually went down. It's just like, oh, this is not interesting at all. And then I freaked out. When Thompson got killed, I flipped out. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is the best character in this damn thing. Uh, he was such like a surly bastard, but in the best way possible. I loved Thompson. He was great. Like, he should have had his own movie. Like, this movie should have been his, but when he got killed, someone else should have picked that character up and made a whole movie where it's just Thompson. They sure love showing Antonio just stroll around downtown. Just... I, at one point, I was like, is this, like, a propaganda film for, like, Visit Australia? Because they showed so much scenery that it was just like, is this, like, is there a point to this? Is this what we're doing now? I didn't get it. I like the scene where Linda's yearning for a better life while Antonio tells her she could be the next cleaning lady. That's right. That's the part where he's got, like, the pasta falling out of his mouth while he's talking. And he's like, hey, you know, the cleaning lady's quitting. And I was th thinking, you could be the new cleaning lady. And you see her, like, zoning out. And she's just thinking about, you know, I could be with Roy. He's got all this money. I could be with my sugar daddy, who has no name, apparently. He's got all this money. And it's it just, why, it, it doesn't make any sense why she is where she is. It just doesn't make sense. The scene where Linda goes to have sex with the three guys, that's the one that features a lot of yellow, but it is also a horrible, horrible sex scene in so many ways. Uh, it doesn't, like, I understand it's there because when they found the body, they said that she was raped by multiple men. So that's the explanation of why she had the semen from multiple men in her. But what's the real purpose like you didn't even need to have that as part of them examining the body like that didn't need to be found like it, it adds nothing to the story if anything it just makes her even less relatable it makes her even worse of a character because to deal with her just feeling like blah about life she just offers to have sex with these three guys for a hundred bucks it doesn't make any sense. It's disgusting, too. Like, the scene is very uncomfortable. It's very disgusting. It's very exploitative. It's nasty. And it's just... It's horrible. It, like, it's disturbing, too. It's just, like, why? Like, why would you even do this? It adds nothing to the story. And this is one of the things, like... It's the 70s. You know, rape was used a lot in films. And this it feels like borderline rape in the scene. So, it, it's just... It, I'm glad we're past this, that stuff. Like, we just don't need it. There are still films where, you know, a properly done rape scene does add to the film if it legitimately adds to the story, but it needs to be very specific and then it really adds to the story in an important way. Um, but I'm glad we've moved away from doing stuff like this in the, uh, the Pajama Girl case because totally pointless. Uh, it's pretty far-fetched that Thompson actually solved this case before he was killed. I didn't see any real indicator that he really solved anything or even got remotely close to solving anything. Um, it's such a stretch. It kind of seems like they were just like, and then magically he somehow solved it. And then just, is like, what? I don't understand. I don't understand. Antonio just spinning in slow motion after he gets hit by the bus at the end. Horrible. Looks awful. I laughed at it because it's very laughable the way it looks. Just garbage. Just... This film's garbage. Everything's garbage. It's an awful film. I can't recommend it to anyone. Ugh. I like the idea to intercut uh, the investigation and the events of what happened, but the story was so stupid, and the investigation wasn't engaging. That's the other aspect of it. Unless it was, like, Thompson-related stuff, the, the investigation wasn't even that engaging. Like, this film fails on so many fronts. The script was bad. The script was very bad. Flavio, what the hell? Come on. The film feels very unfocused, very meandering. Case in point, all the scenes of Antonio just walking around town. I mean, that's what the whole film kind of felt like. It was just walking around town, looking around. Terrible, man. Lots of garbage characters. 
Thompson was the only one that mattered, and yeah, that's it. Uh, that's basically all I got to say about it. I mean, it. I am impressed that it took me till 38 films of Giallo in order to find one that I'm like, this sucks. And I actually keep a list of all the Giallo films I've seen and have them ranked after I watch them. I kind of like figure out where they should go. And this one just immediately went to the bottom. Before this, The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave was the bottom. And seeing this, I was just like, oh man, that The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave is like way better than this. And that movie's got a lot of problems. I was like, oh. So I am very interested to hear what other people have to say about this film. So please put it in the comments. Oh my gosh. Uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm just going to give this one and a half stars. Uh, and it gets to one and a half basically because of Thompson. Because he does have some good scenes basically. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I don't, unfortunately, oh, I forgot to show that I own this thing. That's the worst part. I own this. I don't, I, I'm not going to watch it again. Like, I'm definitely not watching it again. Unless somebody wants to see as much Giallo as they can. And I'm like, all right, we'll watch this crap. But anyway, I mean, it looks good. Arrow Video did a good job putting it out, but it's, ugh. okay. So anyway, give me your comments on this. Do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button. Uh, that's your way to repay me for watching this crappy movie. <laughs> no, it's your way to repay me if you like any video I've ever done. And I'm also just trying to grow this nerdy horror community here. Because... Um, it's fun. I want to talk to other like-minded horror nerds. So also hit the notification bell button because then you'll know when I'm putting up new reviews like this or unboxings or haul videos or any of that. But regardless, thanks for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.